So you, unless you guys are rolling around with people on a regular basis, how do you know what your game assessment is? You don't. You have to. You've got to roll with a lot of people. You've got to roll with different people in order to go, okay, this is where, where I'm strong, this is where I'm weak. Game assessment comes from you looking at your game and then writing down every position. You have your escapes, your attacks, and your controls. And those are your three things, and you can give it a level of one to three. Uh, three being like the best and one being the worst. So like maybe crossbody, maybe I'm a three in crossbody. Maybe mount, I'm a two. Maybe a closed guard, I'm a one. Maybe an open guard, I'm a one. So right off the bat, I look at the numbers, I go, oh, I'm really weak in this, 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 and this. That's what I need to work on. That's called game assessment. So what I've done is I've developed a chart. It's pretty simple, and all it is, it's based on your own honesty. And the chart goes on the wall, and you take each position, and you mark for those three categories, you mark one, one to three. Uh, again, some guys are really good. Like if I'm training on the mat in class, uh, maybe I'm working on new stuff, maybe I'm isolating. Like some days I walk in, and I'm only attacking legs today. Today, all I'm going to do is just go on top. I'm going to work top control. Today, I'm going to go to the guard. Today, all I'm going to do is go to my knees. Uh, today, it's a good class. I'm going to defend the whole time because you end up defending if you can't do anything. Yeah. And then some days you attack. Just all day you attack. And then you can isolate legs, arms, neck cranks, chokes. So that's, that's how you isolate and start to develop your game. It's called game development. And then the other thing is work your positions that you're the worst at. Like for me, for a fight, I don't get on people and just move around. I put everybody on top of me. And what I do, I do an Ironman training. I, I take five guys that are warm, and, and I go in there, and I get more tired and more tired. I've broken down each guy, but I put them in my worst position, like maybe crossbody. And you know if you're going to go up against a wrestler, you're going to be on your back. So you work the guard, and you work crossbody escapes. You work off your back, escaping and getting out. And each guy, you've got each guy who's going to hold you in crossbody for a minute. That's murder. Try to get out of crossbody when guys are trying to control you for one minute. Or kids like a Tommy or a guard, you're on your back, and your objective is to sweep them, arm lock them, or choke them. Those are your three options in the guard. Sweep, arm lock, choke. If you can't do a sweep, arm lock, choke, you're going to try to cross center line and either take his back if he stands, or you're going to take his leg. And those are your five options. But three options are sweep, arm lock, choke. So you have your options in each position, but you don't know what you're strong and weak in if you're not out on the mat wrestling with people. You have to contest your skills on a regular basis. You have to. If you don't contest your skills, you're not going to ever have a question. You're not going to know what you need to, what do I need to work on? Well, unless you're on the mat all around, you don't need it. You wouldn't know because you're not trying anything out. And again, because this is practice, you want to try stuff. You want to attempt new things. Oh, I've got a new thing I want to work on. And keep trying it, trying it until you figure it out. Uh, some guys only play high percentage games when they roll because they think that this is the fight, which is the dojo practice. That's not the fight, that's the practice. You're supposed to tap. It's about tapping. That's when you're learning. If you don't tap, how do you learn? That means you're better than everybody. If you're, if you're not getting caught ever, that means you must be as good, if not better, than most of the people you're rolling with. So maybe you should go out and get 10 other people who are better than you that make you tap in order to, so you can learn how not to tap. The thing is, is if, if you're rolling with guys that you're better than, give them the upper hand. Always put them on top. Put them in the better position. In judo, the highest grade always goes down in the quarter, and he lets the other guy come up on top. And he just starts out here. And the same thing, if I'm going with a guy that's not as good, I'm just going to let him come up on top, let him pass me. People go, how come you let him pass your guard in practice? I go, because I want to learn how to get out. How come you let guys mount you? I know a lot of guys go, dude, he mounted you. And I go, yeah, but it's practice. You're trying to get out. So I let guys mount me all the time so I can work my escapes. When I'm fighting, you think I'm going to let a guy mount me that easy? There's no possible way. <laughs> you know? but, but when you're training, let guys have things and let them do things. Give them your arm and see if they can take it. If they take it, go good. Good for them. If I defend it, it's good for me. So by giving them options and giving them things, you're letting yourself get better. But a lot of people won't do that because they want to be top in the class, you know. And also, I understand the belt ranking thing too. If you get a guy, let's say you're a blue or purple belt, and you get caught by a white belt, but then again, you're developing yourself. So there's also a, a level of humbleness you guys need to acquire when you're training. I, I don't care. You know, I was on a seminar in Pittsburgh one time, and I uh, I was rolling around with this guy. He 
does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, he's a, he's a white belt. I played in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for about 10 years with a mixture of different people. And, and I continually work the drills on a regular basis. Um, I stopped going to classes only because of my schedule and because of the fact that I travel as much as I do and I teach so much during the week and I train during the week. And a lot of times right now, especially because of my competitions, uh, I, I'm not really dealing with too much of a key, but I love the game and I understand it and I have a passion for it. And anytime you lose your passion for anything, you have to rekindle that passion or find your passion again. And, and I lost it. If you're on the mat every single day, it's like you're on the mat, you see the mat, you see the dirt, you get crushed, you're getting your ears and your head crushed, some guys are trying to kill you. You get off the mat, you go home, you go to sleep. All night long, you're dreaming about that wrestling session. You wake up, you're back to the gym, you're on the mat looking at the mat again. You go, I was just here, like, it seems like an hour ago. <laughs> or you put your boxing gloves on or your wrestling shoes on, and they're still wet from the night before. But every day, they don't even dry because they're still, still wet. That kind of tends to burn you out. It's like having one gi, and every time you put it on, it's still wet from the night before because it didn't have time to dry. So the thing is, is sometimes you burn out. So you have to kind of rekindle your passion. And rekindling your passion means to find, kind of find the reason why you originally started the art. Why did you start the sport of the art? You know, for me, like sometimes I go, okay, I'm gonna take it easy, I'm just gonna relax. I'm gonna play sports, I'm gonna go to the gym and lift. I go play racquetball, I'm gonna go to the beach, go run or you know, do some type of athletic, uh, some light athletic activity as long as it keeps me active. Bowling or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the thing what I do is I'm going to do that just to stay busy, but what happens is I find a lot of times people, um, unless they've got a fight coming up, they don't go at that extra level. They won't do two, two training sessions in a day. They won't, after they do their class, go out and run a mile or two miles or jump rope for 30, uh, maybe 15 to 30 minutes after they're done training. They're not going to do that. But how many people do you know that aren't going to do that after they're training? probably three quarters, so automatically that's gonna bump your level up. Plus if you're doing 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 jump squats, and running two miles after each training session, you're already that far ahead of everyone else that's not doing it. And the other thing is um, when you're out and you're, you're taking your time off, uh, you know, start watching, maybe start watching videotapes, or you get bored, and sometimes it takes maybe a serious situation. Like my little brother, he took uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a little while, and then he, he's like, ah, I'm kind of bored. He got bored with, with things. He was doing Thai boxing and jiu-jitsu. And he just got bored with the martial arts. And he goes, ah, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to quit and start playing music. He, starts, he started playing in a band. And then all of a sudden, uh, he was out with his girlfriend. And a guy um, cut him off and got out of the car and tried to pick a fight with him. And he got scared. And next thing you know, he full, he's back full time. <laughs> so again, it depends on, I mean, if, if you guys are you guys are law enforcement or whatever, you need it. You have to have it because you're in you're a life-threatening situation. If it's a passion of yours, look for the technical aspect and also other avenues and things that can help you. You can grow from everybody. I don't care if it's a white belt or a black belt. You can still learn. That's why there's three ways to learn. A lot of people don't understand that. You can watch it. You can have it done to you or you can do it to someone else. So a lot of guys go, oh, I'm injured. I can't learn. I'm not going to go to class. Why? You can still learn. I sit on the class and I watch people's games all the time. And a lot of guys, they, they're on the mat, so they, they become selfish. They're on the mat, they train, they go hard, and they step off the mat and over here, and they're just kind of, until they go, oh, okay, I'm going to go again. Well, in the meantime, while you're sitting on the side of the mat, number one, training time, there should be no talking. Unless you're asking someone about a technique or moving around. But you shouldn't be sharing, like, you know, the football scores from the last week's games that are on, you know, that could be done over a cup of coffee or a beer.